Yes. Um, so first I'm uh, acknowledging my uh, co-PI, Marcus Mayorga, and um, we're doing a longitudinal uh, panel study of Americans' uh, views. Um, so <clears throat> um, we took a, a longitudinal panel study is where you're asking the same group of people questions uh, at several times. Um, and we used an online panel uh, to recruit people. Uh, you can see we've done four waves so far. Uh, we started much earlier than most uh, longitudinal studies, uh, February 28th, which was the uh, day that the CDC announced the first confirmed case of non-travel uh, transmission. Uh, and we're uh, at this point expecting to go much longer uh, than uh, most, if not all, uh, longitudinal studies, uh, just because we're doing this at much longer intervals, roughly two months apart, rather than the more common month apart or uh, sometimes weekly uh, collection. Uh, like the University of Albany study uh, discussed last month by uh, Sam Penta, we're also using the protective action decision model as a foundation uh, because it includes people's perceptions of other actors such as government, uh, not just their own uh, perceptions. Um, and But we're building in some other factors, uh, including some that were used in my earlier longitudinal studies of Americans' reactions to Ebola and Zika, which of course on the mainland were much uh, smaller uh, and shorter outbreaks and uh, were in a decline. Um, this is the uh, model that we uh, included in our uh, original proposal. Uh, we didn't cover all the uh, potential relationships because this uh, figure was always already getting quite busy. But on the right, you can see uh, the threat action and stakeholder perceptions that are part of the uh, PADM with regard to personal protective behavior decisions. We also uh, wanted to explore a support for various government policies like mask wearing mandates and the like. And then we have a number of upstream uh, variables that you can see there. Uh, and as we've been developing these waves, we will occasionally uh, switch in some other measures of other variables that we think will be interesting. Uh, but one of the unique aspects of this study is that most of our variables are asked every single wave. Uh, so that, for example, we're not just asking, are you following the news about uh, COVID-19? which information sources such as newspapers or TV or social media are you using, but also which uh, outlets within those uh, media sources are you using. So we can have for these and the other items listed there, very fine tuned assessments of whether and how things are changing over time. Um, some preliminary findings. Uh, we found that the, uh, a model very close to the one that you uh, saw in the previous slide uh, adequately fit wave one data on personal protective actions, um, but it did not fit policy support. Whenever we tried to put the policy support measures in, the model fell apart. And we're not sure yet because we haven't done the analysis whether this is uh, an outcome of measuring people before, in fact, there were many official policies, except banning travel of foreign citizens and, and the like. Um, we have done a multi-level modeling of waves one through three in terms of threat perceptions. Um, you know, how much do people think they are personally threatened? Um, how much risk is there for the US, for the globe? How much, how much concern is there for local uh, transmission? And uh, we found, uh, contrary to what uh, the Ebola study found, is that there were no individual differences in trends. So there were not factors 
making some people uh, say have their perceptions of risk go up faster or slower than other people. Uh, but we did find a number of factors, including uh, dread and uh, news following, uh, which were also pertinent to Ebola and Zika, uh, pushing people to have higher uh, risk perceptions. And then um, one of the protective actions we had put in because of some anecdotes and news media stories was avoid Asians as a protective uh, action, even though technically it definitely is not uh, protective. And we found that if we uh, measured people's uh, anti-Chinese prejudice and their degree of uh, tendency for conspiracist thinking and their notions of the efficacy of avoiding Asians and reducing risk, uh, putting those in meant that the original direct relationship between avoid Asian uh, intentions and conservative political ideology disappeared. So um, finally, I'll just say that uh, I've already received help from uh, Peter Rose who presented in September on the U UCSD uh, big data project in getting some uh, case data for each of the states and counties from which we've recruited uh, people for our study so that uh, we will later be able to assess how much that indirect experience might be related to people's uh, perceptions. And um, we're already talking with some people about uh, trying to get help with content analysis of these media outlets uh, that I show here. Um, so that we can then not only assess the, the uh, impact of following these outlets, uh, which we were able to do with uh, Zika, um, but also whether the content of those outlets uh, is perhaps helping shape the risk perceptions we're looking at. So thank you.